Hi guys, so recently a journalist spoke to some Boris Johnson supporters outside a pub in England to get their opinion on him leaving. Actually, is he still really leaving? Anyway, their view was that it was a media campaign that drove Boris Johnson out of office, even though his own MPs and ministers resigned en masse. So while England has its crazy Boris Johnson supporters, another part of the UK, it seems, doesn't want to be forgotten. BBC Scotland took this weird call from a Johnson supporter who blamed, wait for it, Nicola Sturgeon for him resigning. Have a listen to this. From East Renfrewshire. Morning, Audrey. Hi, good morning, Stephen. Good should, morning. Should he stay or should he go yes. now? Yes, he should definitely stay. Yes, definitely. Why? And I, because I think he's been a great Prime Minister. I think it's been character assassination by the press and by the people who went Brexiteers. And I think he had a lot of great ideas. He had a lot of gusto. And I'm, I was really quite sad what happened to him. It was a complete push from Westminster. It's an absolute, it's horrible politics. And I blame the loony left. I blame Sturgeon in Scotland. I blame Sturgeon in Scotland. What the heck has Nicola Sturgeon got to do with this? It was Boris Johnson's own MPs that wrote letters to the 1922 committee. It was Boris Johnson's own ministers that wrote letters to him saying, I'm resigning because of integrity <laughs> or honesty. Yes, they supported him for years, up until 24 hours before um, him resigning, saying that, yeah, we couldn't take any more of this. Yes, okay. But anyway, it was them that forced him, forced him to resign. Nicola Sturgeon had zero impact on this. Um, they actually, every time the man tried to get the business, uh, business, the daily business of government done, they came up with all this nasty politics. They didn't add up to anything. This... We know he made a lot of mistakes. I know. Ah, hang on, hang on, he... ah, hang on. We do we? Because he didn't mention mistakes yesterday, yeah, and you've just blamed about... the media and his political well, opponents. What? I'm so told, just, did he not do I'm himself in, Audrey? Gate. The part, the party gate. I'm talking about the party gate. Um, when that, he broke the law. Was, uh, well, that was, that was, there was no malice in that. That was naivety in a sense. That's not an excuse but, in the well, court of law. Well, we had, to, we had to move on from things from that, and we had to get the day. We have to move on. And here we have it once again. People were not able to attend funerals. People were not able to attend the birth of their children. People were not able to spend time with loved ones who were close to the end. And we just need to move on from that, because Boris Johnson broke the rules because he didn't know what he was doing. Boris Johnson was responsible for these rules. Him and his party created these rules. He stood up almost every night during the pandemic telling people, follow the rules. Remember to follow them because you need to protect others. It was not he didn't know what he was doing or he was ambushed by cake, all of this ridiculous these ridiculous reasons that you hear about from, from the pro-Tory and pro-Boris Johnson brigade. He wrote the rules and he broke the rules and he lied about it. That's the, you know, if he had broke the rules at the beginning and said, look, I'm sorry, the day after, I'm sorry, I broke the rules, that would have been somewhat more acceptable. But he didn't do that. He lied about it. He denied it. And then eventually, when he did have to apologise in the House of Commons, do you, do you know what he did after? He went into the tea room and said, actually, you know, I don't know why I was apologising, I did nothing wrong. To do business done of running the country, and every turn, the SNP, the Labour, they kept on and on about this every single day. So he takes no thought... responsibility, he's not responsible at all for his downfall, in your view. It's a plot. It's a plot, and I... <laughs> this person is insane. It's a, it was a plot by the Labour Party and the SNP to remove Boris Johnson from power. And somehow, who was involved in this plot as well? Um, Rishi Sunak was involved in this plot. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> Saji Javid was involved in this plot. A whole number of MPs within his own party were involved in this plot. The, the SNP have no power over Boris Johnson. They don't have the seats to remove him from power. The Labour Party don't have the power to remove him either. But somehow it was a plot, and they don't control the media. The, the media in England in particular is pro-Tory. 
so I'd love to I'd love to know the reasoning how <laughs> how she came to the conclusion that it was the media that was against Boris Johnson, even though most of the media was pro Tory, and how the Labour Party and the SNP, who have really no power in Parliament, were able to get rid of him. I definitely think I would put him back in power tomorrow. I think he had great ideas. He saw that people up and down the country with a lots of talent, but they didn't have the same opportunity. And that's what he was trying to give people an opportunity. He was trying to live. I'm starting to think this person is an activist and not a real caller um, because she's using a lot of this language that like he was trying to give everyone an opportunity. This is something that Johnson said. Now, I've never actually heard this before. This is something that Johnson said during his quote-unquote resignation speech. And I've heard other Tories use it. So I don't know. Maybe she's a real caller. Maybe she really is this insane. <laughs> but it does sound a little bit like an activist. Well, he ain't coming back. So who do you want to see as his replacement? Who should be our next Prime Minister? Boris. I want to be Boris. We can't Boris have him. him. You can't have well, him. We can't, well, if we can't have him, I definitely don't want Sturgeon running the country. I well. <laughs> Nicola Sturgeon is Scotland's first minister. She's not the prime minister. She doesn't have any hope of becoming prime minister and she doesn't actually have any aspirations to be prime minister. <laughs> she wants Scotland to be independent. Not She doesn't want to run as prime minister of the United Kingdom. Okay? And I think it would be slight, a little bit difficult for her to do so, considering that the SNP don't have the numbers. <laughs> Unless, you know, she's planning to run candidates in England, Wales, and maybe even Northern Ireland, and she's hoping to win a massive majority there, and then she will, <laughs> she will ride, you know, I don't know, ride down in a limousine or something to, <laughs> uh, to London, into Westminster, and, and rule the country. This is insane. She's not attempted to be Prime Minister, so no, my question no, to you is, who do you want to be Prime Minister? I, oh, I would think, well, maybe maybe Ben, um, ben, ben Wallace, Wallace, the military guy, because we need somebody who's good on the international stage. And ma maybe Ben, what's his name, Wallace? He, you, you don't even know who the guy is. Yeah, the military guy. I, I heard that he's in the military. That's the guy I want. So your, your support for Ben Wallace is based on something you've heard about him. You don't really know who he is. <laughs> and you do definitely don't want Sturgeon. Miss Sturgeon is not at all good on the international stage. She is Are, you Are you obsessed with Nicola Sturgeon? Are you obsessed with Nicola Sturgeon? No, she's running a failed country in Scotland. She's running a failed state. And that's that's what I don't want. That's what I'm terrified of. If we get, a weak, if we get a weak successor to Boris, we may get somebody who may just give her the opportunity to have a referendum. It's not about giving her. It's about giving the people of Scotland. The, the people of Scotland backed a party. I know this lady here, Audrey, I think her name is. Audrey is a Tory. She's a Tory supporter and she doesn't want an uh, independence. But shouldn't Audrey herself be given a chance to vote? But she doesn't want, she doesn't want to vote and she doesn't want other people to vote either. Ne never mind about independence. This is just about having a referendum. She doesn't want a referendum, but she doesn't want other people to have a referendum either. Think about that for a moment. This is what the Tories are trying to tell people in Scotland. No, no you don't want a referendum. <laughs> uh, yes, I do. No, 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 you don't. Uh, do you want a referendum? No, no, I don't want a referendum, but I also don't want anyone to have a referendum because I don't want to have a referendum. The arrogance of that. You know, once again, it's not about I don't want Scotland to be independent. That's fine. You can hold that position. But the idea you don't want other people to have a choice. Anyway, this, <laughs> this person is, it seems, obsessed with Nicola Sturgeon. And she's afraid that somehow Nicola Sturgeon may become prime minister someday. Insane. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.